tonight from Kelloland Media Group, the Kelloland NCAA Tournament Special Show. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the 2021 Kelloland NCAA Tournament Show Special. We're breaking down the entire field of 68, region by region, game by game, to try and help you fill out that perfect bracket. I'm now joined by our very own Tom Hansen. Tom, thank you for being with us. Well, thanks for having me, Tanner. Appreciate it. Any method to filling out your bracket this year? Yeah, just go with the flow. Honestly, you know, yeah. especially at the beginning of the bracket. There's so many teams I don't really know, so a lot of it is just going by the seed. Well, so. we will start with the number one overall seed, the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Any chance, Tom, the Bulldogs going home early this year? No, I don't believe so. No, they're just too strong, right? Yeah. They lead the country right now, field goal percentage 55%. Haven't lost a game since last year, 30 straight wins. I think it's safe to advance the Bulldogs. Let's get now to the 8-9 matchup between Oklahoma and Missouri. This was a toss-up for me, honestly. Uh, I think either way could have gone. I just, I have relatives in Oklahoma, so I like <laughs> it. Oklahoma. Already, Oklahoma is the pick. Let's move down the bracket now. We get to Creighton and UCSB. Interesting matchup in the 5-12 game. Well, you know, Creighton's, I consider it almost a local school since it's in Omaha, so that's why I made the pick. Led by Marcus Zigorowski, shoots 42% from three, but the last time they played, they did lose by 25 to Georgetown, so be careful uh -oh. there, Tom. Uh-oh. Let's move ahead now. We get to the 4-13 matchup between Virginia and Ohio. I, you like Ohio, don't you? I do. Uh, well, that's why I picked the other team. <laughs> You're taking Virginia? <laughs> Let me tell you, do not sleep on the Bobcats. Jason Preston, great story, averaged two points a game as a senior in high school, now one of the best players in the country. Virginia's good, but watch out for the Bobcats. All right. I think USC, coming up, I think USC is one of the most underrated teams in this bracket. Do you? I do. Well, let's get to the Trojans as we speak about them. They have an 11 matchup with possibly either Drake or Wichita State. And you like the Trojans, Tom. I do. I do. I, they've got a seven-foot freshman center, right? Yes. And I think he could be a difference maker. Evan Mobley is the name. He was the Pac-12 Player of the Year, Freshman of the Year, and Defensive Player of the Year. They're one of the best shot-blocking teams in the country. I like the Trojans as well. Let's move ahead now. Take a look at the Kansas Jayhawks. They get the Big Sky champions, the Eastern Washington Eagles. Kansas is just strong, you know? They, they're just strong. I, I don't see them going down in the first round. Year after year, they get it done. The fighting Bill selfs. All right, Tom's got them marching on. Let's move now to the 7-10 matchup. Interesting game here between Oregon and VCU. This was just a gut check, honestly. I just took Oregon. I like it. Pac-12 regular season champions. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah. All right, Oregon is the pick. I like it. And then finally, the final game of the first round in this region, the number two-seeded Iowa Hawkeyes. They get Grand Canyon. Yeah, you know, when I first read this, I thought it was Grand Cayman. <laughs> That's how bad it was. So I'm going with Iowa here. A little disrespect there I to know, the fighting antelopes. <laughs> Iowa, though, a very good team. They lead the country in assists at 19 per game. Okay, so, so far in the first round, you've picked every higher seed to advance. Let's take a look now at the top part of your bracket. And you've got the Blue Jays going pretty far, Tom. I do. I, I, I think they could... Um take a little further than than most people probably okay now you do have Gonzaga advancing to the elite eight let's move now to the bottom half of your region and that's where things get a little interesting here it appears that you have the Kansas Jayhawks moving on is that correct that is correct I, Kansas is just strong this year I mean they've got a great coach they do Bill Self can really get it done he knows how to coach in March so he has right now Gonzaga and Kansas let's take a look at your regional final Tom You've got Gonzaga, probably the favorite to win it all. Are they getting to the Final Four? Well, th no. They're not <laughs> going to the Final Four. I, I think Kansas is just too strong this year. I'm, the thing is, you don't pick a seed to win the whole thing, right? I like it. I'm like always going to pick some Cinderella team, and I think Kansas is it. Going against the grain. All right, the Jayhawks it is. You heard it here first. Tom Anson, Jayhawks in the Final Four. That'll do it for the West Region. Thank you very much for joining us, Tom. Thanks for having me, Tanner. You got it. Plenty of matchups still ahead and maybe some upsets as we head to the South Region. Time now to take a look at the South Region, and to do so, I'm joined by Bridget Bennett. Great to have you here, Bridget. Yes, I'm just here for comic relief and to prove <laughs> that anyone can fill one of these out. Any secret recipe when you were filling out your bracket this year? Okay, so I went to school in Texas, okay. in Dallas, so you're going to see a little Texas nostalgia. 
And then we've all been cooped up. I'm so ready to travel. I really did where I'm looking forward to, to travel to the best. I like it. Well, I've taken a look at your bracket. You've got some crazy picks. Let's get right into it. And we begin with the Baylor Bears. They're the number one seed. Bridget, any chance that they go home early? Uh, no. Baylor's from Texas, so of course they're moving forward. I agree with you. They've got one of the best backcourts in the country. They shoot 43% from three. That leads the land. They score 85 points per game. That's the safe pick here. Let's move ahead now to the 8-9 matchup, one of the best matchups in the first round between North Carolina and Wisconsin. This one wasn't even a question. North Carolina, <laughs> Wisconsin's too close to home. North and Carolina, you know, hiking, that kind of thing. I like it. The Badgers also have lost four of the last five games. North Carolina, the best offensive rebounding team in the country. Solid pick there. And now this is where things get a little crazy. We move ahead now to the 5-12 matchup between Villanova and Winthrop. Are the Wildcats getting upset? Uh, yeah, because I would rather go to South Carolina than Pennsylvania. I also had to look up where both of those schools are. I had no idea. Winthrop is down south, and I want to tell you about a 6'7 guard. His name is Chandler Valdren. He's from Northeast Ohio, leads the country in triple doubles. I agree with you. Winthrop gets it done. Good pick, Bridget. All right. Woo. Moving ahead, the 4-13 matchup between Purdue and North Texas. Well, Texas, of course, and I've actually been to North Texas. So there we go. That's, they're okay. going to win. You're that confident that the Mean Green get it done? I have no idea, but go <laughs> Texas. <laughs> All right. Well, you heard it here first. The Mean Green are moving on. Let's move ahead now. We look at the 6-11 matchup between Utah State and Texas Tech. Yes. Again, there's some Texas in there, but they had to win, of course. Texas Tech Red Raiders, Matt McClung, transfer from Georgia, excuse me, from Georgetown. He's their best player. I like the pick. Utah State struggling a little bit, lost in the Mountain West Championship. The Red Raiders move on, according to Bridget. And now let's move forward to the 314 matchup between Arkansas and Colgate. Bridget, two teams here that score over 80 points per game. It's going to be a very entertaining one. Sure, sure is. <laughs> Arkansas also has lots of trees, so we went with Arkansas. <laughs> That's information that you're not going to get on any other March Madness show. <laughs> you heard it here, right here. Arkansas is the pick. Okay, let's move now forward to the 7-10 matchup. Really a toss-up game between Florida and Virginia Tech. Florida, for sure. Beautiful beaches. Got to go with Florida. Do you have a favorite beach down in Florida? Um, you know, anywhere right now seems better than right here. <laughs> I agree with you. Gators probably have the best player in this game, Trey Mann. Tyrese Appleby as well, a good player. The Gators marching on. And the last game of the first round in the South region, Ohio State and the Summit League champions, Oral Roberts. Now, this one was a really hard one for me. It was a toss-up. Uh, Ohio and Tulsa, both not that exciting to visit. But I haven't been to Ohio. Wait a second. I have never been to Ohio. Okay. So it, it made it as my pick. Watch what you say there. I am from Ohio, <laughs> as you guys know. Oral Roberts, they have Axe, Max A. Smith, leads the country in scoring about 25 points per game, but the Buckeyes probably the better team. Okay, we've had a very interesting region. Let's take a look now at how you think the top half of your region will play out. And Bridget, you've got the Mean Green advancing to the Sweet 16. Yeah, Baylor for sure is the winner here because my favorite journalism professor, Mr. Peterson, went to Baylor, and it would make him very happy if they went on. That's fantastic. All right, <laughs> let's take a look now at the bottom half of this bracket and this time a little bit of an upset here with Florida beating Ohio State but you'd like Arkansas to advance to the Elite Eight. It was hard to choose between the beaches and the trees but I went with hiking and the trees. Let's get to your final game of this region the Elite Eight. You've got Baylor, you've got Arkansas, who's going to the final four? Baylor of course all for Mr. Peterson. Baylor it is, you heard it here from Bridget Bennett herself. Thank you Bridget for being here, I really appreciate it. Yeah, please don't copy those picks. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> we'll see. You never know. It's called uh, Madness for a Reason. Thank you for joining us, Bridget. And coming up next, we will take a look at the Midwest region and maybe the tournament's best overall player. Time now to take it the Midwest region. And to do so, I'm joined by our very own Don Jurgensen. Glad you could join the show, Don. Hey, thanks for having me, Tanner. Now, I heard back in the day you used to play a little college hoops. I did at Dakota Wesleyan. I was probably the best warm up player ever. <laughs> heard you were a big dunker in warm ups, is that correct? Yeah, I, <laughs> I could throw it down with the best of them during warm ups, yeah. <laughs> well, we take a look at this region. We'll start with the number one overall seed, the Illinois Fighting Line. I know you're very high on them. 
I am. I mean, look at that player right there, Aya DeSumo. Mm -hmm. National Player of the Year, averaging over 21 points a game. And if you watch him play, I've been watching Illinois play for the last month now. He reminds me of Michael Jordan, a young Michael Jordan. Same body Whoa. makeup and uh, kind of the same shot. So I, I really like Illinois. This team enjoys playing with each other. I think that's the safe pick. Let's move ahead now to the 8-9 matchup between Loyola Chicago and Georgia Tech. You got to go with Loyola. They've been playing well as of late, mm -hmm. but they have Sister Jean in their corner, a 101-year-old lady who got tested three times. She's going to be in Indianapolis watching the game, the biggest fan for Loyola. You got to go with Sister Jean. Their lucky charm and also Georgia Tech going to be playing without their best player, Moses Wright, out due to COVID-19 related issues. Let's move forward in the bracket, the five seed. Tennessee Volunteers meet Oregon State. Yeah, you know, I don't know a lot about these these teams. Um, Tennessee has lost a lot of close games this year, but they've been playing well. And I know a 12 always beats a 5 somewhere in the bracket. Somewhere, but not this bracket. I agree with you. Tennessee has two phenomenal freshmen in Jaden Springer, Keon Johnson, both going to be first-round talents. I like to pick. Moving down the bracket, the four-seeded Oklahoma State Cowboys and the Liberty Flames. Um... I, I, I like the Oklahoma State Cowboys in this this matchup. Okay. They've been playing well as of late, like I've said, and they've beaten a lot of good teams this year. I know Cade Cunningham might be the number one overall pick. He plays for Oklahoma State. He's but, good. But don't sleep on the Liberty Flames. They're legit. They've won 11 games in a row. I think Oklahoma State squeaks by, but closer than the experts think. Okay, now we've broken down the first four games in this region. Let's get to the next four, and we begin with the 6-11 contest between San Diego State and Syracuse. I like San Diego State. I've been watching them play. They've got a lot of young talent on their team. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I you know, you got to go with a higher seed, too, on this one. Matt Mitchell, Mountain West Player of the Year for San Diego State, 6'6, 235, physical guard. Syracuse can shoot it, but I like the pick taking the Aztecs. Next, we go to the 3 14 matchup West Virginia and Moorhead State. Got to go with West Virginia, the Mountaineers. Uh, Traditionally, good ball club, mm -hmm. well coached. Uh, I, I like West Virginia in this one. Bob Huggins, a heck of a coach. Derek Culver, a double double machine down low from Northeast Ohio as well. The Mountaineers, I agree, they'll march on. 7 10 matchup. We've got Clemson and Rutgers. And uh, we have a little upset here? I, I like Rutgers in this one. Uh, Clemson struggles at times. They're kind of wishy washy. Yeah. And Rutgers has been playing well. A lot of these teams that I've been saying, they've been just stepping up when they, when they need to. Want to find a team who's getting hot at the right time? Exactly. I like the pick in Rutgers. And the last game in this region, the two seated Houston Cougars meet the kids from Cleveland State. I absolutely love Houston. I like them a lot. They destroyed Cincinnati last week. And I feel like they're going to go a long ways in the tournament. The Cougs lead the country in defensive field goal percentage, holding opponents to 37%. But don't you count out the kids from Cleveland. They're oh, tough. Of course. Yeah, Mr. Ohio here. <laughs> <laughs> They've got 10 <laughs> players who play at least 10 minutes. They're deep. They're the champions of the Horizon League. This would be a close game, but I like to pick with Houston. Okay, now let's take a look at your entire region and how you think it will play out. Let's start at the top. And you've got Tennessee meeting Illinois in the Sweet 16. Yeah, again, I still like Illinois. We talk about they have two big men, two seven-footers on their team. Mm -hmm. Kofi Coburn. Yes. Yeah, he is the next Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> he is so tough down in the paint. He, when he gets close to the basket, forget about it. Seven foot, 285. He is a big man. Let's move now down the, to the bottom part of your bracket. And you've got Houston coming out of this part. Again, I like Houston to make a lot of noise in the NCAA bracket. They're playing well. They're the two seed. And I think they're going to they're gonna go. So it's Illinois and Houston in the Elite Eight. Who marches on to the Final Four? I believe Illinois. Just the way they're playing. You see Kofi Coburn there. He is, like I said, a monster inside. <laughs> so I, I really like Illinois. The one thing about this team, they've got a lot of talent, but they enjoy playing with each other. They're fun to watch. I think Illinois is the pick here. Yeah, I like DeSumo. He reminds me of Batman when he wears that mask yeah, out there. Absolutely. He's a superhero. And he's got his Robin and Coburn. Yeah. And real quick down, before we finish up, tell me who's going to win it all. That's a tough one because I actually have Iowa upsetting Gonzaga. Wow. Yes, I believe it's Luca Garza's turn. He, he means business, and I like them going in against Illinois. Okay. Well, one final region when we come back. Don, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Tanner. You got it.
Welcome back. One region left to go on the men's side, but before we get there, let's quickly switch to the women's NCAA tournament where the Coyotes and Jackrabbits are both dancing. After winning the Summit League tournament, the USD women clinched a berth in the big dance during a trip to San Antonio where the entire women's tournament will be held. They enter as an 11th seed and they'll get a chance to knock off the Oregon Ducks who've lost five of their last six games. Tip-off time is set for 9 p.m. this coming Monday and can be seen on ESPN2. And the SDSU women Jackrabbits received an at-large bid to the tournament after completing a 21-3 regular season slate with three wins over top 25 opponents. The Jacks were given a 9 seed and they will meet Syracuse in the first round. This game can be seen and will be aired on ESPN2 this Sunday at 4.30 p.m. We've taken a look at the West, the South, the Midwest, and now it's time for the final region, the East, where the Michigan Wolverines find themselves as the number one seed. And this Michigan team, when playing well, is as good as anyone. The seven-foot freshman Hunter Dickinson having a stellar season. Mike Smith, a terrific point guard. But the Wolverines enter the tournament a bit shorthanded. We'll talk about that a little bit later. I do like them to move on. Let's look ahead now to the 8-9 matchup between LSU and St. Bonaventure. Very good game here, and LSU is uber talented. Cam Thomas, as you see right there, scores 23 points per game. Trenton Wofford, very skilled at 6'9", and Javante Smart is an NBA point guard. I like the Tigers to advance to the second round. Moving forward, 5-12 matchup, and this one right here is for Dan Santella. I'm taking the Hoyas, baby. They're playing good basketball. They've won four in a row. Last time they played, they beat Creighton by 25 points. Now, if it's a close game, Colorado, the best free throw shooting team in the country, but I like the Hoyas to win this one, maybe even by double digits. Let's move ahead now to the 4-13 matchup between Florida State and UNC Greensboro. I love the Seminoles. Probably one of the most versatile teams in the country, one of the deepest teams in the country. Leonard Hamilton is a fantastic coach. Take the Seminoles. Well, moving ahead as we take a look at the East region, the 6 seeded BYU Cougars will meet the winner of the playing game between Michigan State and UCLA. Something tells me the Spartans will get it done. Rocket Watts running the show now at point guard for the Spartans. Aaron Thomas, one of the best players that not many people know about, averaging 15 points per game. I know BYU has the 7'3 transfer, Matt Harms. He can protect the rim, but Tom Mizzo knows how to coach a team in March. Give me the Spartans. Let's look ahead now to Texas and Abilene Christian in the 3-14 matchup. Longhorns won the Big 12 tournament for the first time in program history. Now, Abilene Christian, they can play. They're 23-4 for a reason. 18 assists per game. That's fourth in the NCAA, but too much Texas here. Matt Coleman, Andrew Jones, they get it done. Texas marches on. We march on to the 7-10 matchup between UConn and Maryland. The Terps don't start anyone in their starting lineup over 6'7", and UConn, they protect the rim well, average over five blocks per game. That's sixth in the country, and a name I want you guys to know, James Booknight, a 6'5 guard who can go. Dropped 40 points on Creighton earlier this year. Take the Huskies in this one. And lastly, the Alabama Crimson Tide taking on the Iona Fighting Gales. I like the tide in this one, averaging 80 points per game. Herb Jones, a 6'8 point forward. He can really play. Alabama advances. Okay, now let's take a look at the whole region, and we'll take a look at the top, and we'll start with the Michigan Wolverines. They'll get LSU. They're going to move on. But in that Sweet 16 matchup, the Seminoles from Florida State will upset the Wolverines. Scotty Barnes, a 6'9 forward. He's going to be a lottery pick. Florida State going to the Elite Eight. In the bottom part of this region, Michigan State and Texas, I like the Longhorns and I like Bama down low. And that's a heck of a matchup there. I think Shaka Smart finally gets to the Sweet 16, but he'll go a step further. They're gonna get to the Elite Eight this year. The Longhorns will meet, that's right, the Florida State Seminoles in the regional final. And in this game, I like Florida State. Leonard Hamilton, a fantastic coach. I think the Seminoles march on to the Final Four. So that's it. Your guide to a perfect NCAA bracket is complete. A big thank you to Security National Bank, Avera, DriveSafeSD.com, Sanford Health, and Vance Thompson Vision. I'm Tanner Castor saying so long. 
Enjoy the madness.